Hey everybody, um, haven't done a video in a while. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, I want to talk about a recent pickup. Um, newer game, new to me. Um, it's uh, Rivers of London. So um, <clears throat> if you if you watch my channel, you probably know that I'm a big Call of Cthulhu fan, a Delta Green fan. Um, and, um, you know, Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green are going to be, uh, investigator games where you're playing some kind of sort of like a supernatural detective, whether you're really a detective or not, uh, Delta Green, you know, the default player is a, a FBI agent or some kind of like special forces or right? there's all kinds of areas that Delta Green recruits from, right? Call Cthulhu, you could be a librarian or a dilettante, uh, something like that, right? So, um, what is Rivers of London, right? Uh, Rivers of London is, it's another sort of supernatural detective type game. Um, you are playing investigators, and it is, again, a modern setting. And uh, the default setting is, I think it's 2010 London. And they are based on uh, Ben Aronovich's Rivers of London books, right? So, yeah, how, how is it different from Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green? The main difference is that, well, there's two main differences. The first one is, is that it's not a Lovecraftian game. This is not set in the Lovecraft universe. There's no Shagas, there's no Cthulhu, there's, you know, nothing like that, right? Um, Rivers of Lennon is its own thing, but it is still a supernatural themed game. Um, I think that the elevator pitch kind of is like for, for the books, at least, is um, what if Harry Potter joined the London PD and learned about magic through a special branch of London PD instead of going to Hogwarts, right? And um, having said that, if you have read Harry Potter and you're a fan of that kind of stuff, um, or if you're a fan of the supernatural detective kind of genre, you're, you're going to like these books. Like, you're, you're more than likely going to like these books. They're really, really good. But do not give them to your niece or your nephew or your kid and read them with your kid. Um, I'm telling you right now, these are not young adult novels. There is some very explicit sexual content in these books, some very R-rated kind of, not X-rated, but R-rated kind of sexual stuff. I think that's the main a uh, warning label I would put on these. There is, you know, some, some violence kind of stuff and um, language and, you know, all that. This, this, they're not young adult novels, right? Um, and the other main difference between Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green and Rivers of London is that um, the players are encouraged to use magic. Um, you're, the magic system is a huge part of the game. Um, the, uh, um, <clears throat> the players are, are encouraged to use magic whenever they're investigating anything. Um, a lot of the, uh, the, the kind of default setting involves, like, ghosts and, uh, poltergeists and, you know, the, the fae and, um, and stuff like that. And the, the rivers and the rivers of London are, refers to, um, well, the rivers, <laughs> the rivers of London but also ley lines. Um, and that's where characters get their magical power from. That's where they draw their magical energy from. And there are different types of magic. There's Newtonian magic, um, like uh, casting, moving objects and casting fireballs and, you know, things like that. And there's also like shamanistic kind of magic. And um, there's river gods and like some of the river gods are resemble more like Jamaican gangs um, with uh, voodoo priestesses, you know, at the, the top. And it's, um, 
It's sort of, it's, it's, I think growing up Harry Potter is a good kind of analogy. And it's, and it kind of fits that a little bit more that it's not, it's not horror as much. It's more like supernatural adventure. Um, but, you know, again, you're, you're, you're playing investigators and you're, um, you can draw on different backgrounds. Like, um, there's some stuff that's sort of written into the game that would not take place in a real police force. Like, they wouldn't, um, have, uh, consultants like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, con artists or something that are, um, a part of a police investigation that, you know, they're helping out and stomping all over evidence and things like that. But, you know, it's like, it, it takes some liberties with the with the actual police investigation and stuff, right? Um, so it is different, again, like, um, you know, we can see we've got this game, or we've got this illustration here. It looks like they're all playing Call of Cthulhu, but these are definitely Rivers of London type characters. Like, you can be a familiar, you can be a fox, or a dog, or something like that, who is a magic user. Um, and, uh, Actually, so if we pull up the, the character sheet, um, you're going to see that if you, if you look at the character sheet, like this is the main character sheet, um, if you're a veteran Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green player, and you look at this, you're like, oh, you know, that looks very simplified, right? Um, and so... And Delta Green is simplified from Call of Cthulhu. It's like a 6th edition, and it's simplified from that. Um, like in Call of Cthulhu, um, I think, what do they call it in Delta Green? I have a Delta Green sheet right here from a game, a recent game. Um, yeah, in Delta Green, um, Intimidate and persuade and charm and skills like that that are separate things in Call of Cthulhu are all condensed down to persuade. It's one skill. And in, in, in Rivers of London, it's the same thing, where all of your social skills are condensed down into one social skill, right? And there is no, like, um, psychology to tell if somebody's lying to you, or there's no... Um, you know, specialized like swimming or survival and uh, stuff like that, right? Um, but it's sort of, it, it, there. there is computer use, right? There is, there's things like that. Or if you want to be a character who is really intimidating, like tough and big and intimidating, you know, in Delta Green you might say, oh, like my, you know, my character's like an ex-Navy SEAL or whatever, and they're huge and intimidating. They breathe down this guy's neck and try and scare him. Your keeper or your handler could say, yeah, you know, roll with like a plus 20 or a plus 40 because you have all the homies around you and you're scary, you know, you're a big guy. Um, Rivers of London, you could take um, expert skills. So you're going to have your social skill, but you're also going to have your expert skills. Like um, this character here, um, Nafisa, is, um, she's a Newtonian magic apprentice and she knows magic. So um, that's one of her kind of pulpy talents, is that um, she can throw fireballs, right? And we'll get into that. The magic system is really, really cool. But um, it's, it's the same thing where if you wanted to make a character who's a hacker, then you might take, like, hacker as one of your expert skills so that you have, you know, a bonus die on things that involve computer roles or, or something like that. Those are going to be in your, your expert skills. Or say that you're, I don't know, an expert at uh, car chases or something like that, right? So they give you the, the option of having like kind of pulpy talents in there too. Um, so, dropping things. Um, <clears throat> and again, you know, like you're you just melee, like fighting and firearms. Um, it's, it's all just very simplified. Reperson, observation, research, the, uh, um, so 
because Nafisa is a magic user, she is going to have the Sense Vestigia spell. So this is another thing that's specifically Rivers of London. Um, Vestigia is like magical energy, sort of like juju or something like that, where um, say that you visited a um, an old mental hospital that had been shut down because of all of the horrible treatment of the patients or whatever, and then you just got this really creepy kind of vibe, like the hackles on the back of your neck are standing up, and you just feel like there's bad energy like sticking to this place, and it's haunted, right? That That is the type of thing that your investigators in Rivers of London, they can tap into. They can sense the vestigia that's in a place and get the specific vibe of like a ghost or something that might be haunting the place and some of the things that have sort of happened there, um, some of these like traumatic events or if it was like a battlefield or something like that, you know, you could see some of the battle. And it sticks to different things, like vestigia sticks to stone really well. Stone retains vestigia really well. Metal retains vestigia better than something like wood. You know, it, it like it... It, a lot of it has to do with how permanent an object is. Like actually in the the city world, plastic holds vestigia really well because it's semi-indestructible. It just has to, you know, it just doesn't degrade. So plastic holds vestigia well. Um, but uh, so yeah, let's talk about the um, the magic system, right? Um, <clears throat> So, like I said, you're, you're in this world, um, there is a supernatural branch of the London PD that handles hauntings and things like that. And um, they do not, it's sort of like Delta Green in that you're supposed to keep the information about this supernatural world under wraps. Like, you're not just supposed to say, oh, you do have a ghost. And I'm a police officer and I just, you know, like I have this body camera of this ghost doing this, you know, whatever. Um, it's sort of like you're supposed to sort of keep it under wraps. Um, but so some of these spells, right? So if we look on uh, Nafisa's sheet right here, she has the skill or the, the spell Impello. So Impello is going to be um, like if you wanted to pick up an object and then throw it, you know, using like telekinesis or something like that. Um, and uh, basically it's like you can pick up a small object and then throw it using your, your mind. So these are new, this is Newtonian magic, right? Um, weird light is going to be um, creating like a small flame in your hand. It's a magical flame. And, you, you know, it creates light, but it doesn't create heat. Um, and then it is, like, irresistible to ghosts. If you cast weird light in your hand, they're sort of drawn to it like a moth to a flame, and then they will sort of materialize and want to maybe interact with you, um, seeing you use magic. And the way that um, the magic system works is that it's very modular. So if you combine Impello with weird light, then you can throw a magical fireball. So Impello is a first first order spell. Weird Light is a first order spell. They combine to make a second order spell, fireball, right? Um, so there's no um, <clears throat> there's no sanity, right? Just make sure that I'm not lying to you about that. Yeah. There's, there's no sanity in the game, so that's totally different from um, Call of Cthulhu and uh, Delta Green, again, that um, you, aren't, um, you aren't at risk of your character going insane, from, mostly from using magic, right? Um, or seeing the supernatural, um, like seeing a ghoul consuming a corpse or something like that, right? Um, yeah, I want to take a close, I want to sh show a little bit more about the magic system. I gotta find it real quick. 
Okay, here we go. So um, we have like a little flow chart here showing um, some of the like first order spells, like low level spells like Aqua, Impello, um, Weird Light, things like that. And then you can see that um, as some of these spells combine, uh, combine things, you know, to make stronger spells. And some of them are just single spells that you would be able to learn um, as you as you advance. And then, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But here's like the um, the the skill tree, if you will, of Impello. So we can see that from Impello, um, you can branch out, combine it with Weird Light to make Fireball. <laughs> Combine that to make something else called Skinny Grenade or, you know, a Ball of Lightning. And then there's going to be, like, much, much higher level spells as you go on. And um, that's going to be another area where this is really different from Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green. As far as the, um, the meta game of leveling characters and... Um, uh, how that works. So, um, in Call of Cthulhu, you know, or, or Delta Green, like you're, you're going to get better at doing things by using your skills, right? Uh, Delta Green, you kind of fail forward. You, you fail the, the, the skill, you check it off and then you, you know, you roll on it to see whether you, how much better you get at it. Um, Call of Cthulhu, you, who, you succeed at the spell and then you need to roll over, or you succeed at the skill, you need to roll over it in order to get better at it, you know, with the, the level up. Um, so Rivers of London is gonna be more simplified than both of those in that you're just gonna give your players so many points to level up like each session or whatever it is, or if you know, if you wanted to use something like a milestone approach, like you could use a goal system where um, if you're like sort of trying to track whether your characters are growing, like you would have them make goals. Um, and then as, as they're going along, you know, you could check off those boxes and say, OK, I accomplished this goal. And then, you know, once you get to three or whatever, then you get three points to put into your level up. Right. So how it works in Rivers of London is that one point of level up is going to be worth 10% in a skill or 5% in two skills. So say that your character, you, you, somebody leveled up in one of your games, you gave them three points. Um, they could level up three different skills by 30% or they could, they could maybe buy um, like a pulpy talent, you know, like being a, a hacker or something like that for, say, two points, you know, or being big and intimidating for, for two points or something like that, which would give them a, a bonus or, like, you get the idea, right? So you can level up your skills, you can buy, you know, you can learn new spells and stuff like that, and, um, and then you're, you're going to buy sort of pulpy talents, Right. So that's how that's how that works. That's how the you know, the the metagame kind of um, uh, skill possession or uh, um, level curve works. Right. And I mean, it's nothing like D&D &D where your your first level character could get killed by a, a few rats or something like that. And then you get to level 20 and you're fighting demigods. You know, it's never going to be anything like that. Um, the, the level, the power curve is very smooth and gradual. It's, it's, you know, it's not broken past level 10 or whatever. And then, um, it's, um, you know, it's going to be much more gradual like Delta Green or, or Call of Cthulhu, something like that, right? Um, <clears throat> so, um... Yeah, I think it's 
if you were ever interested in playing Call of Cthulhu and you wanted to give your characters the ability to see ghosts and interact with ghosts, um, you know, when they're doing like their supernatural investigations, having like a, a spirit medium or letting your players use like folk magic, um, doing some types of magic that are not broken, but are also not completely sanity melting. Um, I think that you would be interested in, in Rivers of London. And especially if you're coming from Call of Cthulhu or Delta Green, it's just simplified. You know, it's, it's the same thing, it's just simplified. So you would pick it up really, really easy. Um, I think it's it maybe a, a lot less intimidating of a system. I mean, it's I feel like Call of Cthulhu and Delta Green are kind of rules light as far as crunch goes, you know, compared to something like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or, or what have you, something like that. I feel like it's not very intimidating and it's pretty easy to pick up. Um, but I, if you you know if you're a fan of these kind of games, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I, I I really really like it. I think the great the game is fantastic. The books are excellent. They are really really good. Um, where's my yeah? Um, ben Aronovich has a he has a fantastic sense of humor. I mean he's you know he's hilarious. The books are just really really good and then if you're if you like harry potter or if you like the supernatural detective kind of story i think you're going to enjoy them but i would recommend it i would say pick it up you know if you if you like any of those types of games and uh yeah i think that's going to be it you guys i think that's uh, all i have to say about it so uh take care of yourselves and i will see you in the next one